Welcome everybody, my name is Juan, and today I'm going to show you three different ways in which you can split a field in Tableau. What you're seeing right now is, let me show you, it is Toastmasters data. If you're not familiar with the organization, that's more than fine. You really don't have to understand that much what this data means. It's just uh, clubs, their names, their location. If you are familiar with this data and you know what it means, well, uh, probably you're going to have a blast watching it. But if not, don't worry so much. What I want you to focus on is we have this field right here called renewal status. And as you can see, it contains some information of the status and it might also contain a date. As you can imagine, it's not an ideal situation that these two things are tied up together and we want to split that field. Today, I'm going to show you three approaches to splitting this one. The first one, which is probably the easiest one, is to right click here, click on split. When you click on split, Tableau tries to make an educated guess on how exactly you want to split it. In some cases, it's going to be fine. But in this case, I know from experience that it's going to split it up a bit too much for my liking. Let me show you what I mean. It has the status exactly like I wanted, but on top of that, it also split it up my date. I'm going to go back and proceed. And I'm going to try now with custom split. With custom split, I can just try here. The separator is going to be this little slash. In this case, you can either try if you click on the first one, then it's going to give you the status, just there's a status. You could click once more. I let to give you the last one. Or you can also click here, custom split once more in all and see what happens. It does exactly what you expect it to do. It splits it here like this. When you actually go to your workbook and you look at these calculations, they're actually using a formula, oh, sorry, a formula called split, yes. Let me open up the help. The formula split does exactly the same thing that you do here from the data source pane, but you could actually rewrite this as a formula. It also has a trim because apparently there is a space in between. But that's, that's not so relevant. This is, I think, the easiest method to split the data. But for learning purposes, I'm going to show you three methods. Let's, um, now let's, yeah, let's remove these ones. Okay, once again, now let's try to split them with an if formula. In order to be able to split them, we actually need some supporting calculations. The first one is going to be find, which behaves really similarly to the one in Excel. Find in this string, the substring um, align. I, I don't know how, how you call it. Right? This is going to give me a zero if it's not able to find the line, which it should be the case for renewals down here. And if it's able to find the line, it's going to give me the position in numbers of what exactly it is found. Okay, let me turn this into discrete so that it's easier for us to see. Perfect. What you can see right here is I found it and it was in position 10. I think this is index 1. Yeah, this is index 1. And I didn't find that it was in index 0. How am I going to split it? I'm going to create a calculated field and I'm going to start with an if statement. I'm personally going to do an intermediate if or IIF. I just like a little bit more how it looks, but in this case, you could do either. What I'm going to say is if, let me try to copy this formula. I'm clicking on control and dragging it so that it copies. If the result of find this one is a zero, meaning there is no date, uh, no date, then I just want you to give me the whole renewal field. 
on Danny Vampire's playing or something. If there is a date, then I only want everything to the left of whatever this number is going to be. Number of characters, I want you to input this exact number. If you have experience with these methods, you're going to notice that this exact formula is going to give me two more characters than what I would like. Let's paste them here. Yes. Gives me exactly what I want, but then on top of that, also this little bar, minus sign, and a space. How do you fix that? It's very simple. You take this part of the calculation defined, and you just subtract two from that. I will apply, and the line is gone. In order to get the date, that one is a bit more complex because we this time not only need this find formula, but we also need this formula called length, or actually the length of the whole. I do it with here the renewal status. It's gonna give me once again a number. I'm transforming them into discrete so that it's become a bit more obvious what exactly I'm trying to do. Basically, the dates here, if you start from position 21, which is the last character of this whole string, you go 10 characters less, and then you, you get that, and that's your date. How am I going to do it? I'm going to duplicate the formula that we had, because it mostly works. I'm going to call it date. If we don't have a date, that's the small one. Fine. Uh, we just keep this part exactly the same as it was. But now we have to do something that is interesting and I'm going to take a bit more space to do that. I'm going to, first of all, call this calculation that we already built, the length of this string, which is going to be 21, minus the find this is going to give me, in some cases, 11, in some other cases, I think 14. I don't remember correctly. Let's check. Uh, yeah, mostly, oh, it's, it's always going to be 11, of course, because all of the dates are formatted properly. So we now know that dates are always going to be 11. We could potentially, let's ignore this for now, we could potentially hard code this, like write a string renewal, and then say that we want 11 characters. This is possible, but as you can imagine, it's not the best method. Why? Because if the dates happen, that right now they have a leading zero before the four for example, in here. But what if in the future this changes a bit? Well, it's it's better not to hard code it. I'm just going to put this one here. Maybe let's give it a bit more space. It's, it's quite a formula. Let's, um, I don't know. Formatting formulas is uh, it's an art on its own. Let's go. Back. It's just for you guys to get an idea. We call this one date. Let me remove status that we had right here, and I'm going to place date now. What happens? Um, it works mostly for all of the cases except here. Now that I think about it, I'm going to go back to the calculation. And instead of renewal status, I'm going to write no in here. Now I'm going to change this one to a date. And it works perfectly, exactly like I wanted. Now I can use this field as a date. That was the second method of splitting this one's up. The third method I'm going to show you today uses regular expressions which a lot of people hate using, but I'm personally a huge fan of them. Let me 
Yes. For those of you that don't know, since version, I believe, 10 of Pueblo, roughly two years ago, it is possible to extract, match, and replace characters based on regular expressions. Here, right here in Tableau. For this, I'm actually going to use a strap formula. Let's click here on strap. And uh, for those of you that are not familiar with regular expressions, please check them out. It's uh, maybe not the most beginner concept to grasp ever, but they're really powerful. And I'm going to show you how I would do it. The first argument of the regular extract formula is the string that I want to play with, which in this case is really clear. It's this one. Now, how exactly would I write a regular expression? What I personally do, let's park this formula here for a bit, is I will copy all of these ones up, Control C. I will go to the browser and I will go to this web page, Redix R. It's a really, I, I mean, I love this web page. It makes my life so much easier when you're testing regular expressions. Now, I could potentially write this in a very verbose way. For example, new space club or verified slash complete or something like that, which would be ideal because then I'm making the things very, very strict and potentially when somebody writes something else that doesn't fit this status, it's not going to match. That's a possibility that you have, but I'm personally going to make this a lot less strict. There is this regular expression, which I really like, and I think it's one of the worst practices ever, which is dot asterisk, which means match everything. The catch here is that I can say, I don't care whatever, but please stop if you find a little dashed line, right? I could potentially say there is also something else. And what I'm going to do to, in this case, it's, it's very predictable. Let's, let's try it properly. There is a space after the slash, and afterwards there are some uh, digits. It's always going to be two digits. I could potentially write a plus here. Those of you that don't know regular expressions, you're probably not following this very well, but that's fine. I'm just uh, not going to really explain how exactly it is that I'm doing. Uh, you also have to add these slashes, I believe. Yes. Okay. In regular expressions, we have this concept of um, groups. If I wouldn't close this part in parentheses, it's going to strap only the part that is in parentheses. Let me show you a bit better what I mean when I open Pablo. And if you really don't care about regular expressions, then maybe, uh, maybe you, you're fine. Just focus on the first two methods. But I, I think that for some people, it's going to be really valuable to learn these regular expressions. What you see right here is I have the regular expression that I built. It says everything until this dash, then there is a space, then there are two digits followed by a slash, two digits followed by a slash, and then four digits. In parentheses, I wrapped, I only want this 
digits for this part, which is essentially the date. Let's see if this happens. Um, I'm hoping for the best. I'm going to call this date, click on OK. It makes a string. And voila, it managed to get the date. I transform it into the date. And that's it. Essentially, what I did is I, I told it with regular expressions which part exactly I want. And luckily for me, dates are in a very predictable format. If they would vary a bit more, for example, that sometimes they're one, sometimes, uh, for example, here, sometimes it's zero, four, and sometimes it's just four. In those cases, I could just use a plus sign. That would have also worked. But let's keep it a bit strict for here. To get the other parts of this formula, I'm going to duplicate this calculation. Turn it back into a string. I should have probably started with the status. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the parentheses and I'm going to put them here in the dot. I'm going to call this one status and now put it in here. What you can see is that I essentially did for something very similar, I said grab everything until the slash. I could potentially, um, I hope I'm not wrong about this, but I could potentially also erase everything and our regular expression is going to still work because it's only grabbing anything until there is a subtraction symbol. Right. To recap, there are three ways in which you can split information. I think the first one, which is either clicking here on split, custom split, or you can also do it programmatically with the split formula. That's a very simple way. In a lot of cases, it's going to be fine. You also have a way which is probably the way that Excel users would, uh, would do, which is with if statements, with left, right, with minus the length and then removing the two characters. That's also a very valid method for some cases. Um, I don't think there is that much need to do it in Tableau, but in some other tools, it's very useful to learn how to work with find, left, and right. The third method that I show you is with regular expressions. Once again, this is not a regular expressions tutorial. I hope you learned some of the very basic things. But if there is one thing I want you to remember about regular expressions is that it's a very powerful tool that gives you a lot of control of what exactly you want to take in here and what not. Think of regular expressions as something that you could potentially do with a really long if formula. And in fact, I'm, I'm not even sure that you can copy all of the regular expressions in, and translate them into ifs. This particular case is good because if there is, right, right here I have the date formula. If there is anything after the slash that is not a date, then I'm not gonna match it. It is very strict. It's only gonna match things that have these specific formats. And for some use cases, when you have a lot less control of the data coming in, and when the data is a lot more unpredictable, Regular expressions might be a very interesting uh, tool. They're, of course, a lot less predictable. Uh, sorry, a lot more difficult to read. So maybe your colleagues that have to de debug this workbook in the future might not be really happy. But I just wanted to show you how this works. Thanks for watching.